Now, what we're going to do is, as we uh, talked about the non-locality of a quantum potential, let's summarize what it is and how, by observing through a higher order of things, like David Bohm, you can see also that Einstein's theory of relativity and nothing can go beyond the speed of light is only true in the projection of things, not as far as the hologram itself is concerned, because that is a higher order. It's a fundamental order, not the octave order. Yeah. In the octave order, yes, uh, Einstein's theory is okay. What I mean by octave order is in, in this viewing hologram, when we are looking at this, yes, Einstein's theory is okay. But when you go in higher order of things, which David Bohm is talking about, when you actually reach the fundamental rather than the octave, you are in a higher order of things. And from that perspective, uh, the theory of harmonics don't work in the fundamental because it's already included in the fundamental. So no matter how much or how many uh, harmonics you add, it'll never, never reach the fundamental. So fundamental is fundamental out of which all the harmonics actually come out. So let's see how this higher order of things um, overrides Einstein's theory, basically. That's, the, that's what I want. And this is what David Bohm, he was having uh, coffee one day in front of a television and still thinking about this problem. How do we perceive these things if it is indeed a hologram? How can one electron communicate with another electron instantaneously? Because to, for uh, information to go from one electron to another, non-locally, in other words, if the spin of an electron was plus half, the other one would be the same way. That at speed of, you know, much higher than Einstein's speed, which is instantaneous, basically. And Einstein wasn't alive to see that, but as we said later on, it was proven by aspect, and, and John Bell was instrumental in that also, that reality is actually non-local. Let's see how this actually works in, in a holographic uh, sense. So to summarize, let's just refresh our mind about the quantum potential. First of all, it differs in the sense that it has no physical source. Okay. Physical is the octave. And hologram doesn't come from the octave. It has its own existence. It exists by its own majesty. The film exists by its own. And even more unacceptable, the action of a quantum potential depends only on its form, not on its intensity or amplitude. Now, whenever we see a wave, you know, we can see how high it is, amplitude. But to imagine a wave without amplitude, now that requires some imagination. It has form, but no amplitude. That's what he says. The form here of the quantum potential gives information that is communicated instantaneously. It's the form that's giving the information, not the amplitude. Once you come to amplitude, you're back in the octave. So this is amazing. With many physicists, well, none of them actually understand what is being said by David Bohm. It's the form of the quantum potential that gives information that is communicated instantaneously which appears to violate the speed of light. Thus, quantum potential could be seen as providing information from a metaphysical realm because it's the form. If there's amplitude, you're back into physics. But if it's just the form and no amplitude, what kind of wave is that? It just has a form, but no amplitude. So therefore, you can't even measure the form, the, the waveform. So it is this metaphysical realm in the sense that it's beyond space and time. Because if you have space and time, then there's a wave and therefore there's an amplitude, there's time there. In other words, this quantum potential is non-local. 
John Bell provides this proof in the uh, using EPR experiment and then later on proven by Aspect. So Bohm believes Aspect's findings imply that reality does not exist, that it despite its apparent solidity, which we saw because both the observer and the real image on the both side, same side of the hologram, uh, the universe is at heart a splendid gigantic hologram. In other words, it is projected from that hologram uh, when the divine light actually hits that Kundalini. Now, let's see how that, that instantaneous communication actually takes place, which is very interesting. And this was, the idea actually dropped in, into his head while he was watching television. Just like Archimedes, when he went for a bath and sit in the sink and the water came up, he said, voila, Eureka, I know something is right. I know I can see how ships can float now in water, although it's made up of iron. Yet when I drop a coin in the water, it'll sink down. But a, a ship made up of iron will still float. So a moment of inspiration, the penny dropped. A genius, you know, went for a bath and now he knows how a ship can float. So same thing happened to David Bohm. How can I explain this? And suddenly, he, while I was having coffee, he saw an aquarium with a fish in it. And then suddenly he got the idea. I can now see how this instantaneous communication takes place. So let's look at that. He saw an aquarium. There is a fish there. Okay? There is just one fish in the aquarium. He said if there was two television cameras, one here and one here, they are recording what this fish's movements are. And then once it's recorded, it's being projected. So this one is projects here, this one projects here. Okay? So this camera is looking at the fish and, and this is how it looks. The head is on the right side, the tail is on the left. This one is recording this, and it's the opposite of that. Okay? Now, when this fish actually moves, say, turns clockwise, this camera will also see it, and it'll give the image according, accordingly, this, the image. Now, somebody watching this screen, two screens in one room, side by side, and observing that, would think, when that fish turns clockwise, that one does the same. So these two fishes are communicating. Whatever this one does, the other one seems to do the same, instantaneously. And that is what um, Bohm was trying to Say, so here it is. Bohm explains the analogy of a non-local fish to demonstrate the mystery of non-locality. Pretend you are in another universe and have no idea what a fish is and have never seen an aquarium. You are shown a fish in a, you are shown a fish in a tank, only you are in another room. Observing the fish via two cameras set at different angles, transmitting their images onto two separate screens. There is only one fish in the tank, but you see two. When one moves, the other one moves immediately in a different but concurrent way. As if they were communicating instantaneously. Bohm suggested that this is what is happening on the subatomic level in exper exper experiment. We see two particles when actually there is only one. He says the separateness is an illusion. So this is where you know, I, I have high respect for David Bohm, that if you are none the wiser, you don't see the real fish, and you're just looking at the holographic image of it from two different angles, you would think there is instant communication. In reality, it's not the case. You're looking at the projection and that's what this, um, the great scientists are trying to do. But you're only looking at the projection, depending on which angle your camera is. In reality, the real fish is in the hologram.
it's in the recording. So you're analyzing something which is illusory, imaginary, although it's real, it looks real, because you're on the same side of the hologram, you're only analyzing an image. So reality isn't like that. And you can see why when one fish moves, the other one moves also beyond the speed of light, but you can explain it why, because it's only one fish. Can you see that? So that's why the higher order, we are only looking at the projection, remember, just like that. And this camera here is recording it, which is our camera of consciousness and awareness. And they're projecting the same thing. So this is how non-locality actually works. So this is very interesting, and now you'll see why physicists, they are analyzing this all the time. If they only knew what they're analyzing is set up this way, then there'll be no problem. 